one of the best studied parts of the brain, the hippocampus has been revealed to be not only the center of episodic memory, but also the center of our moment-to-moment -moment lives. We use the hippocampus to generate mental simulations, to compare past and present stimuli, to help buffer concepts and ideas. I propose that we also see the hippocampus as being the engine of our experiences. I propose that the hippocampus is generating this experience right now. The subjective experience you're having at this very moment is actually a brand new episodic memory. So, what about patients without hippocampi? Am I proposing that they don't have subjective experience the same way that you and I do? Yes. Patients without working hippocampi still have lots of other communication between brain regions so they can still perform relatively normally. What they're missing is memory and the big picture. Those of us who do have the big picture experience only that. And we do so because our perspective is always from within the big picture. My brain creates a movie about the events of my life. And that movie includes a central character, me, who seems to be aware, who seems to be having experiences. But that me character is there primarily for the sake of memory, for the sake of my future brain. My future brain can remember this experience and learn from it. It needs the me in the memory for context. What was I doing in the past event? How did I feel? When did I become aware of that threat? Everything I've done, everything I've thought or imagined or tried was part of the movie of memory. Of course, there is a real body doing real things in the real world. And that body has a brain. And one of the things that that brain does is create memories, including creating me. But actually, the major part of the brain is focused on sensing the world and responding to it immediately. Input leads to output. I loosely refer to that vast outer cerebral cortex area as the immediate action network, or Ian for short. But one thing that Ian can use help with is learning. Learning often takes repeated exposure to a stimulus. But with episodic memory, instead of having to repeat the exposure over and over, the brain can just repeat the memory over and over, conditioning the Ian to learn more simply and safely. The Ian does its processing in immediate reaction to the outside world, and then it sends reports of its processing to the hippocampus to be encoded within the next moment's new episodic memory. That full memory then is sent back from the hippocampus to the parts of the Ian that contributed to the new memory. It is their activation by the hippocampal signal that I propose is equivalent to experiencing. The reason why subjective experience is so rich and full of detail is because your whole brain is creating it. Why do we have these inner movies? Why aren't we just robots? But why have an experience at all? What does the brain use it for? Well, think of a rat that has just encountered a novel berry. Its first action is to explore that berry, to take sniffs and small bites. During that exploration, its hippocampus is revved way up so that the taste and smell and appearance of the berry will be well remembered. If it turns out that the berry was poisonous, but the rat survives, then the rat's memory system will associate the qualia, that is the taste and smell, the raw elements of experience, of the berry with the qualia of feeling sick. Next time the rat runs into a similar berry, it will explore again. 
but the quality of the new experience will pattern match back to the quality of the old experience, which will then elicit the quality of being sick. In this way, qualia can be seen as mnemonics, as the brain's way of encoding the world for memory, for the sake of learning. Especially for animals without language, qualia are necessary for representing the world for memory. There is a third crucial brain system that is part of this learning, and it observes the experience. The core network, often called the default mode network, evolved with the memory system to be able to interpret those memories. Its input is the new memory experience. It uses that input to try to figure out what's important about this event, what's going on in other people's minds, what might happen next. And the core network contributes its own simulations into the new memory so they are experienced as well. These simulations include thoughts and mental imagery. The core network exploits the hippocampus's ability to represent complex sounds and images, as well as its incredible data buffer as a virtual workspace in which to run simulations. Together, those simulations form the appearance that we call mind. Dreams are the same kind of hippocampal movie as waking experience. The difference is our waking dream is constrained by stimulus from the outside world and by the reality check of the prefrontal cortex. Dreams, by contrast, are ephemera, epiphenomena. During REM sleep, the hippocampus tutors the Ian and it does so by playing its memory movies backwards and forwards to condition the cerebrum. Because the hippocampus is an experience generator, it turns all that processing into an absurd experience movie, the dream, which is meant to be forgotten. These three networks come together to form all the elements of experience. We live within our memory movies. The theory is called EMOS, the episodic memory model of subjective experience. I'm Matt Fall, co-author with my dad, Bill Fall, of the peer-reviewed theory paper titled Neurotypical subjective experience is caused by a hippocampal simulation. Published by the journal Wires Cognitive Science. Links to the paper and to an FAQ are available at our website, consciousnessdoc, as in documentary, dot com. I'm dedicating this video to the memory of my friend, Dr. Ralph Peter Barron. Please share this with someone you think will enjoy it. Copyright Stickman Films. Music license from Envato Elements. 2019-2020.